Um, so I just got into the business because I was looking for some type of job that would accommodate my school schedule. Um, at the time, I was looking for flexibility. I was looking for maybe like light, uh, light hours, but still doing something that I enjoy that can work through my schedule. I was um, trying to be a, a physical education um, teacher um, in my community. And I was like, okay, what am, what am I good at? <laughs> so I was, I'm good at baseball. I played baseball my whole life. Um, I always wanted to be a coach of baseball. Even when I was in high school, I was like, oh, I want to be a PE teacher and coach at the school. Um, mm -hmm. So then I was like, okay, let me, let me get into this. Let me see how it is. I can always, you know, do this on the side. I never thought it was going to be some type of full-time, you know, um, kind of thing. So I posted on an ad. I started on Craigslist. Um, and I used some old equipment that I had. And within a couple days, I had like two inquiries of, of my services. And they're like, oh, we want to meet up. We can do it at the park. We can do it here. We can do it there. I want to, you know, I want to see what this is all about. Mm -hmm. um, so right from the start, I enjoyed it. Um, and I right away, it took off. I probably, it so happened that person that I had, he knew a family member of mine. We're a big baseball family. He's like, oh, you're related to so-and-so. And he ended up telling like 20 other people like right away within like a week and a half. Yeah. So I started doing that. Um, slowly it went just from working just like maybe a couple hours on a Saturday or Sunday to yeah. maybe working all day on a, on the weekend. Um, and then it went to a reliable part-time job. And then now I do this full time, just cool. running my business. Awesome. So tell us a little bit about your, your company and your business then. What do you guys specialize in? Um, so I do um, baseball training, um, but I focus more on performance enhancement training in pitching, which is uh, very popular um, yeah. nowadays. So we do uh, velocity training, we do weight training and conditioning, we do mechanical analysis, and we do uh, pitch development. So mm -hmm. That's where our focus is in right now. Um, mm -hmm. It's kind of transformed from just a basic like lesson. Hey, I need help with this. Help me fix this in the short term. Maybe a uh, maybe a two week to maybe two month kind of thing. So now it's mm -hmm. it's really getting them long, getting these clients long term, committing mm -hmm. to a program. Now it is it is in an academy. So we have a team. We have uh, several other coaches that help me out. Um, mm -hmm. we have camps and clinics that we do. Um, I also work, um, for, um, the San Santa Fe Springs so the city of Santa Fe Springs. Um, so I do different, different, um, you know, things that kind of, uh, bring revenue into the, the, you know, the Academy. Um, yeah. but to answer your question, uh, we specialize in performance enhancement training in pitching. Awesome. So for any coach watching, and I know there's going to be a lot of coaches watching that are, are wondering, how do you go from doing it part time to doing it full time? What what are a couple of things that you need in order to make that transition? Um, I think it, it's it's really creating having an official business. Um, It was it wasn't an official business. It was kind of like like kind of part-time cash maybe Venmo or Zelle or just anything that they can pay you with. Um, and I, I felt like it was, it, I grew like that, but I felt very, it got stagnant at a certain time. It was, it was very, uh, it was, I was ranging between like five and $7,000 a, a month, just doing it kind of like part-time in a way. Mm -hmm. Um, and my part-time, I was kind of stuck there. Um, yeah. but to get into full time, I needed an official business and a brand. I think the brand having it, having that really, uh, boosted it up. Um, I think client management is super important. Um, mm -hmm. you have to have them set on like long-term commitments, short-term commitments mm -hmm. can work, but it's just a lot more difficult. Um, you're always yeah. chasing for new clients or I think it's ste being steady. And even during the holidays, it can still bring in um, revenue. 
yeah. um you know during those like holiday months or rainy days and stuff like that you can still uh make a lot of sales mm -hmm. um with with commitments um mm -hmm. contracts is another thing um you need you need to have the contracts so that parents take it a little bit more seriously yeah. as well as being able to charge him officially not like oh let's let's just do cash or let's do so it seems kind of it seems more legit if you have a website you have all that kind of set up you can take credit card payments um all that so you're, you're they're able to to buy from you at any time so right. um once i was able to get that set um i can make a sale in the middle of the night when i'm i'm asleep you know people can yeah. just go on the website they want, they want to book something they can go on the website they can book for their camps or clinics um they don't necessarily need to talk to me unless they they want to but um i've made i have made sales while i'm asleep so i can wake up in the morning i'm like hey look i made you know two three <laughs> sales and now i can you know hop on a call with them and, and and talk to them and set them up for you know a specific day and time but at least i'm i'm still making uh, revenue that way um, I think another thing is being able to receive like upfront forms of payment, um, for several months at a time. And that's yeah. what made sales at an all time high. I'm not capped yeah. off in like how many clients I have, um, yeah. or how many hours I can fit in in that month or, you know, I, how, how many hours I can push through that month. It's more like, okay, if I get this high ticket, you know, client that pays, uh, this much is like it covers like almost a whole month of what I I got paid like you know before having it yeah yeah uh, yeah oh, awesome so how, how many clients do you currently work with per week um I have about 40 clients uh consistently coming in and I probably had I would say I had more before um just because a lot of them didn't like that. Um, they liked the the, the short-term commitment. So I had more, but not necessarily made more. So yeah. it's more, more higher quality clients. Um, yeah. And then I have about another 20 that I would see on occasion. They maybe do like a camp here, a workshop here. Um, mm -hmm. Maybe, you know, they, they uh, do a, a pitching analysis and an evaluation um, so I'm kind of getting in and out, maybe another 20, um, not mm -hmm. all of them hurt. Um, mm -hmm. but I, I've noticed if you're staying consistent with it, um, you can, you can really get them to, to commit to it because now they're, they're, they're getting a little bit more time to, to get accommodated with you and to get to know you. And they're like, oh yeah, he, my son really loves this, um, yeah. this coach and this, this program, this training. Yeah. Awesome. So you mentioned that you you have teams in your program. Now, I had a, a question from a coach, and this was last week, and he, he asked me, he said, Leo, how, how do I implement teams into my program? So for the viewer, te tell us a little bit how, how you went into starting the business and then implementing teams into the program. Or did you start with teams and then you did a coaching program? T tell us a little bit about that. No, so I started off with private training one on one, um, like kind of like Ben did. It was like fifteen dollars an hour, and then I bumped it up to like twenty five. It was twenty five for a little while, and then it went to thirty. And then I I, I started selling packages, kind of like right up front, um, like upfront packages, maybe a hundred to one hundred and twenty dollars for private training, um, at a time. And then I got, um, some, I guess some inquiries for mini groups like they wanted to have their buddies together like maybe two to six buddies at a time so i would charge them more and i was like hey i make more with the group than i do with the, the private um so i did that um and then when i when i went into teams was i had a after over some time i had gotten a lot of like clientele base and even whether whether there were in the program or not they were you'd be coming in and out or whatever that they knew about me and then they were like okay when we need his your services um you know they 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 were saying hey i have this team i'm coaching this team i need help 
coaching this team can we bring like the whole team and and you, and you mm-hmm. can train them or you can come to us and then i started doing that um it was more like i did it under like team consulting so i helped make their lineups i helped create their practice plans i would you know work one-on-one with a few players on the side that needed a lot of help they would just you know help the the weaker players or the players that weren't as experienced that needed a lot of attention helping those kids kind of help the whole team um so i would i did that and then i was like i always wanted to make my team and i always had a lot of parents ask asking oh you should have you should start a team and you should do this and you should do that so i was like okay that was after i started building a good clientele base and getting to know a lot of people and networking Mm -hmm. uh, with a lot of clientele um Mm -hmm. and then um i always that was one thing that i kind of i started missing because i was coaching at the at a high school and I always had a team, you know, and for a couple of years I did and I really missed that. So I was like, okay, I get to see these kids in practice. I see them in private training, group training, mm-hmm. clinics or whatever. And I can't, I don't see them during the game. And that's, what's like very special seeing their progress in the game and, and, and them being really excited. Like, Hey, I did this or you taught me this. And I did, you know, um, very well. Mm-hmm. Um, So I had, I didn't have any of the systems in place. I couldn't take uh, forms of payment over the card. It couldn't be automated where it just pulls it out automatically. I always had to be hunting for, for, for them to pay. So I didn't want a lot of that, the turnover. So Mm -hmm. once I created the systems or the business first officially, then I was able to create the systems. And then that I was able to, you know, with the contracts, get them on board for a 12 month commitment. Um, and I had a pool of players that I started off from the very beginning, almost like from when I started off at the park and I started off in the cage training, like from almost from the very beginning, I had, I had this whole group that was maybe seven, eight years old that kind of now they're 13 years years old. And then I'm, Mm -hmm. I'm working with that group on the team. So most of them were able to transition um as well as the team consulting in the last year or two um a lot of those kids that really liked me kind of like helping out with the team they were like okay you have a team they joined so I ended up getting half of that group from there and the other half came from um you know the the original group that I had gotten uh when I first started Uh, so it was it was not an easy um task it was it was it was a little difficult um and I think it was it it was difficult too because of how long it took. It it just took a lot of time. It just wasn't instant. You know, yeah. it grew slowly. Um now somebody looking for a team, they need to kind of start off, I feel, um maybe not charging a crazy amount because they don't know you. And I think that a lot of the kids that end up not joining the my team training, yeah. um they're like, it's, it's very pricey for them because I'm offering mm-hmm. private training, the team practices, field practices, and then mm-hmm. I'm doing all the tournaments and games and the mm-hmm. uniform package. So it can get very pricey, but they yeah. don't have to go to another team. Yeah. Um, that was one problem I also had was mm-hmm. um, getting these, getting the, um, cause I was training these kids and then they were going somewhere else. They were yeah. paying me maybe, at the time, maybe two hundred dollars a month, and then going to another team and paying another two to maybe three hundred dollars a month to play on that yeah. team, and and I was like, well, why not? I just combine just create it mm-hmm. and create it and 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 source it just here with me um, yeah. and my and my coaches. So um, I actually have two uh, brothers; they're a little bit younger than me, and and they help me out and um, you know coach um the mm-hmm. team and stuff like that and help me run you know the practices so uh overall it's, it's been it's been fun you know doing that but that's awesome awesome yeah. so you've been you've been part of make money coaching sports for a while now um talk talk to us a little bit about how your business has changed since being part of the program um i think the having uh, a structure having a structure with you know the community also having like a, a daily structure with like just being disciplined and having a, more of a set schedule instead of 
hey, I'm making this much because I have these clients coming later. Now it's more like I need to do this. I need to sell. And then now I'm not working as much in the evening. Um, I think to the getting the the questions answered, mm -hmm. um, you need a lot of experience when you're doing something like this. Yeah, you need a mentor. You need you're gonna have a lot of questions and things can pop up on an instant, and you need those questions answered right away mm -hmm. because you can lose clientele and you can lose um, you know high ticket sales if you're not quick with this. Speed is very important. Um, and you know, somebody that's far more experienced than you and has made mistakes, having those questions answered helps you not make those same mistakes. Um, so I think that in other words, like, um, just like having the structure and the discipline help in general, but also getting mm -hmm. the questions answered quickly. And then you can get a, a a network of other coaches that are doing the same exact thing that you're doing um, and they can help motivate they can help um, maybe give a, a perspective or something that's happened to them mm -hmm. and you're not making those same mistakes and then you know now your your business is suffering because of it mm -hmm. so what was what was your biggest obstacle you faced before joining up joining our program um i think um not having like contracts, not having them committed, um, not having a brand. Those were the biggest things that I needed. And I was always kind of like, oh, I'm going to do this part time. But a lot of the time, it's just the belief that you can do it. And then you're like, how many, well, how many coaches do this? You're like, that's mm -hmm. not really heard of. Or you hear stories of, you know, coaches or somebody that has, you know, some money saved up and they've always wanted to do this. And, then they they open up a facility right away and they make a lot of mistakes. Um, they don't know how to sell, you know, and, and they make a lot of they make a lot of big heavy mistakes that kind of suffer and then their 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 business suffers and they and then they don't they're not successful because of it. Um I think that um having having the 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 having Samcar, having Kajabi, um having the upfront payments, all that, that was, those were big obstacles for you to really grow. I felt like I was being stagnant with what I knew and it was, I was, I was stuck and I was like, okay, how can I get myself to the next level? And I couldn't until, you know, until I had all these questions answered and, you know, having the belief that I'm like, Hey, this guy's doing it or these other coaches are mm -hmm. doing it. Um, I can do it too. You know? Yeah. So you're getting the guidance from that and that's that's really helped me um you know every tuesday you know we have a we have an online meeting mm -hmm. um every day you can always ask questions so mm -hmm. it's been um probably the best investment i've made in my life um yeah other than uh lasik as well <laughs> lasik <laughs> super important too um yeah. but yeah, other than that, I mean, I can't say any other type of investment that I've made and got in a return on it, mm -hmm. I would say within weeks. Yeah. Um, because I already, you know, I already had clients already. So it was easy to transition them. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. That's awesome. So where, where do you see the private training industry going in the next two to five years? Um. Mine specifically or just in general? Yeah, yeah, like baseball. Um, I can see I can see it making, you know, a hundred and fifty to two hundred thousand dollars a year within the next like two years. E I think easily. Um I think starting it off, i yeah, yeah, everybody makes, you know, some some mistakes in the beginning and now I kind of experienced it with um you know running a full-time business and and doing it mm -hmm. officially um yeah. i think it's it's really only been like four and a half months for me like i've started mm -hmm. i started the, the program a little like like in july i believe yeah and i didn't i was on vacation and i was trying to transition into into this new method um so i'm really it's really been since like september 1st i can mm -hmm. say so it's been like about four mm -hmm. and a half months 
Yeah. Um, we've done about 70 uh, K in four and a half months in sales. Awesome. Um, I can see it easily like doing some things different in those four and a half months. I think like mm -hmm. starting from the next year, like starting yeah. fresh, I think that, you know, you can, we can easily do 150 to 200 in a year in the next, in the next year or two, I believe. That's awesome. And where, where do you say, where do you see the industry in general going? Do you see the industry growing uh, year on year or where do you see it going? Um, I, I still see it um, to be very, very profitable. Um, mm -hmm. I, I think that in the next, you know, they, I did remember in school prior to even, you know, getting into this, um, even before knowing about Ben's program, um mm -hmm. they were saying and it was gonna be growing all the way up to like two twenty thirty that it was gonna yeah. keep going up. Um I don't know, you know, past that, but I I they I've read a lot of articles saying like, oh, this is really a good yeah. industry to get into right now, you yeah, know, and yeah. set yourself up and get experience now. Um mm -hmm. because it's it's gonna continue to to go up on the uphill. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. There's not a lot of programs either for for kids. Mm -hmm. um, like there was before, or like like a lot of cheaper programs. Now a lot of it now is is parents investing, families investing into, you know, private training and private coaching because they know they know it's better. It's not volunteer work. It's not, um, yeah. you know, you know, a side thing. It's it's official businesses and experienced coaches working with their with their child, and, and you know they want to get them. They want to get them better, and especially with the, the social media age i mm -hmm. think that um you know a lot of kids are are sedentary they and yeah. and the parents want to get them out and active and whether they become pros or not most kids don't but mm -hmm. they're gonna they're gonna learn things along the way they're gonna learn discipline they're gonna learn commitment they're gonna learn consistency um they're gonna learn how to have fun be a part of a team be a part of training um know what it takes to improve other aspects in their life just besides you know just the sports they can take a lot of those things that they learn um from from private training um yeah. and in, into school and into other areas of their life mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. absolutely so what do you look for when you bring on a new client into your into your baseball academy um i bring i like like the excitement right away if 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 i see the excitement and they have a good attitude and mm -hmm. and they're okay with com committing like hey it's a six month thing and they're like they're not right away like whoa whoa no no i'm not gonna do that like if they're like already <laughs> like oh i'm good i i can do that and they're happy and excited to work with you and they mm -hmm. have a good a good relationship right away um and it's and it's fun and it's and it's positive that's what I'm looking for. If I'm already having, if I feel it out and I'm like, the kid's like kind of whiny or it's kind of like not really, not really wanting to, but the parents kind of forcing them there. Like that, that's not what I'm looking for. It's just like, I can, I can totally say like, it's just not about the money at that point. It's just like, okay, where, how are you going to continue to grow? And to continue to yeah. grow, you need, you need those, those, those kids to, to be, excited to come to your program and that's how they're going to get better they're going to transform that way you get okay. kids that are, are very like you know unmotivated or not excited to be there they're not going to put their full effort they're not going to transform and then you're not going to you're not going to get those testimonies um it's going to mm -hmm. just make the program just look bad in general um, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Awesome. So what, what is your current sales and marketing process then? So how do you sell and market the, the program? Um, I like doing a lot of Instagram. Um, mm -hmm. So I post on Instagram. Stories are good. Um, Instagram ads. I do pay for Instagram ads. I, I did this even before, um, you know, going through Ben's program. I was already doing that. Um, I mm -hmm. had some some experience in, in sports management in my undergrad and, and we had taken, I had taken several marketing. So I, I wasn't necessarily like super afraid to, to, to pay for, for ads. I was like, okay, let's, let's invest this. And if I lose it, I lose it. But 
at least I'll get yeah. some experience and just experience with, you know, in school um, kind of helped me out, kind of get the, you know, the first few steps going. So I had done, I had done, a, I do a lot of uh, Instagram ads. Um, mm-hmm. Word of mouth was probably the biggest in the beginning. Word of mouth was big and still is. Um, mm-hmm. uh, referrals, having some type of referral program. Hey, like if you get, you know, this person in or you bring a buddy to the camp, then you can get, you know, you can get it for free. You get it for a discount. Or you can get a free class if you refer a buddy to a camp or clinic or some whatever, yeah. um, and then you can give them you can give them those classes. Um, clinics are another thing to market your business. Mm-hmm. Camp clinics um, because sometimes it, they're not going to start off on a six month commitment right away because a lot of them are like still skeptical. So you yeah. need you need to give them the insurance that you know and you're there for them and it's and it's about getting their their um you know child um better you know yeah. and the last thing i would say is apparel having that brand um mm-hmm. and having apparel like hats and shirts um are are super super important um because then they can they can wear your your if they're excited and happy to be in your program they're going to wear your apparel they'll go to school with it kids will ask them, what is that? What is that? Or oh, I play baseball too, or I play, you know, so-and-so sport and you have that apparel that's going to, you know, they're going to be interested and they'll might tell their parents. Mm-hmm. Um, they might be at the park and they'll be like, Oh, I go to private training. I go with mm-hmm. uh, so-and-so. And um, then that kind of like markets markets hit as well. I got in a few um, clients kind of tell like that as well. And then they look mm-hmm. good. You know, they look good. They yeah. feel good. They're going to, you know, play better and they're going to really want to, you know, show mm. their, show their progress. Um, just cause yeah. they're, they're happy, you know? Yeah, absolutely. It looks, it looks professional as well, doesn't it? Hey, yeah, definitely. Yeah. They're not just kind of wearing hand me down or, you know, other like kind of old, you know, um, shirts and hats or raggedy stuff They're You know, they're wearing your, your apparel and it feels good and for you too, because then they're like, Hey, they're wearing your name across their chest or their on their hat. Um, so it just, it just looks a lot more professional, professional. Yeah. Love that. So last question for you. So what would you say to a trainer that's watching that hasn't yet started his business, but is looking to, to, to take that jump to start it? What's a couple of things you would, a uh, piece of advice is you would give them. Um, I think you need, you need a mentor. Um, you need some, you also need some, uh, you need some in, like money saved. You need, some, you know, something to start off with. Um, it, it is a little bit of a risk in the beginning, but if you have the system in place, you have the mentor, you can get help with the questions that you need. Um, that is, you know, super important. You know, you have to have, yeah have that um if you want to be successful now you can you can do it without it it's just it's hard to grow um and you got to be careful with like the insurance um you know taxes um so you gotta you gotta you know if you don't have official business um you're looking to start the um you know a, a, a coach um coaching business um you, you you need that you need to have you know all that in, set in place mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. awesome all right lorenzo well well thank you very much for coming on here sharing uh, your story your journey um i see your your updates your successes every every single day so want to wish you all the best and continue to keep it up because i know I've, I've been seeing some great results from from you um so if any coach watching uh, wants to get in contact with you or wants to follow your business your journey what's the best way to do that um i think the best way what i'm most on right now is um on instagram uh, my instagram is um perez underscore um baseball underscore academy um that's where they can get in contact with me if they have any questions um, I know I have gotten in contact with other coaches that have gone through Ben's program and I was, I wanted to find out more, um, get their perspective. Um, 
and I had done so and, and I seen their progress and, and, um, that was, that was, that was very, um, assuring. So I was like, okay, so this person did it. And so I wanted to know from this person directly. Um, so I have gotten in contact with others, um, in the past or just even seeing their progress. I'm like, wow, this, they, they grew from like two years when, when I was following them last, you know? So it kind of got me going. I was like, just the belief them like this person could do it. I can do it too. You know, so definitely if they have any questions, they can contact me and on, uh, on Instagram DMS or, or, or gray and I'll get back to them. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. All right. Well, fantastic. Thank you. Thank you for coming on. And hopefully I can bring you on in 12 months from now and um, your business will have grown by then and we can we can see the progress you've made. Yeah, looking forward to it. I'm excited uh, for what's to come. <laughs> awesome, man. All right. Good luck. And I'll speak to you very soon. Yeah, definitely. Thank you. Thank you for having me on. See you later. Thank you.